Hi, it's Barbara, and welcome back to another episode of Can I Recreate It in Elementor? In this series, we take a look at websites with interesting design elements, and I see if I can recreate those elements using the Elementor page builder. In this episode, we have a submission from a subscriber. Thank you so much for your suggestion. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we upload new videos here every week and we love your suggestions. So if you have something that you want to see me recreate in Elementor, leave a comment down below. We are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and we're getting really close. So it's super exciting for us. I know for a lot of people, that's probably not a huge number, but it's a big goal for us for this year. So if you can hit that subscribe button, it would really mean the world for us. And we would love for you to join the community. The website that I'm going to be looking at today is for Irvine Company, and I like this website. I think they did a really great job with their layout. I like the professional images, and this slider is pretty cool. If we take a closer look at this section, there really is a lot going on. Upon rollover of these titles, the text scrolls up. On rollout, it goes away. We have images changing in the background. We have some color changes. There's a lot going on here, but it's pretty cool and I'm excited to try to recreate this in Elementor. Now, this only works on desktop. This would never work on mobile just because of the way this is built. You can't do hovers and sliding images like this. It's just not gonna work. So if you actually take a look at this on mobile, you see that they have a completely different layout. So I'm only going to worry about the desktop version, which makes my life a little bit easier, but this is something that I probably wouldn't ever add to a website, to be honest, because I usually hand off the projects to clients and I don't really like having them have to edit in two places. And if I use something like this, they would have to edit the desktop version as well as the mobile version. And a lot of times they forget that there's two versions. So I try to do things that work on all devices, but if you are managing your own website and you wanna add something cool like this, go for it because I think it's a really cool effect. Uh, you have to remember to edit your site on desktop and mobile versions in order for it to be effective. There aren't really any widgets that I think would get close to what we have going on in this section. So I'm definitely going to have to use some custom CSS and jQuery in order to get this to work. I think I can use the toggle widget to achieve this effect we have going on with the rollover, but with the toggle widget, by default, it opens on click. So I'm going to have to change that so that it works on hover. But I think that I can do that and it will work pretty well. I will also be using Elementor Pro for this. I think you could do it in the free version, but it's definitely going to be a lot easier in Elementor Pro. So I highly recommend if you are going to attempt this to use the Pro version. I'm also going to be using the Flex containers, which is something new that's still in experimentation mode in Elementor, but I really love it. I think that this is going to be a game changer in terms of development. There are so many more things that you can do with the flex containers and you can definitely do this using the old version, the old way, but I'm using the new one just because I think that this is what's going to be what we do in the future. So I want to get ahead of it and really learn the ins and outs of it. This was definitely a learning experience for me. I'll be the first to admit that I am not the best at jQuery. I don't use it very often. Um, so I had to do a lot of research and some trial and error in order to get this to work right. If you are a more experienced jQuery user, this stuff is probably pretty easy for you. But for me, I definitely learned a lot by attempting to recreate this. When I was doing my research, I used Stack Overflow, which is a site that I use pretty often when I'm trying to figure out more complicated things. It's a really great resource. A lot of developers use this site to help each other out. So if you're looking for a way to do something and you're not quite sure how to get it to work right, that could be a really great resource for you. And I also use a really great tutorial from the website Element How. I am going to link to this tutorial down below. I use this to figure out how to change the background on Hover. Now, it's not exactly the way that I needed it to work, but I adapted it to my needs and it was really thorough, really helpful. 
there's a lot of really great tutorials on this site. So I wanted to give a shout out to Element How for really helping me out in figuring out how to do this tutorial. He explains it way better than I could. So I'm definitely going to link to that so you can figure out how to do this. I have my page opened up in Elementor and I want to walk you through what is happening here. Instead of recreating everything from scratch, I wanted to start off here and just walk you through the process. If we go to the navigator, you can see that I have a container and then within that container, I have another container that includes my background image. And then within that, I have all of my different toggles in their own separate containers going across the page. I also have a container below that with some HTML code. You can't really see that in here, uh, but it's definitely there. You can see all of my jQuery script over here. And then under that, I have a container that includes all of the images that I used in the slider. If we just go to preview this, you can see that if we roll over different sections, this works really well. The reason that I have this container with the images in it is because when I was trying to figure this out, I didn't do this at first and I was getting this weird flicker when I would hover over the different areas and that's because the images weren't preloaded onto the page. The element how tutorial that I followed to really make this work effectively said that you should preload the images to avoid that flicker. So that's why I did that. And it really does make a difference. As you can see, when we hover over these, there really isn't any flicker that happens at all. It transitions nicely in the background. So if you are struggling with that, this is something that really does help solve the problem. Uh, so with this section, it's completely hidden. So if we go to the advanced tab, you can see that. If we go to responsive mode, you can see it's hidden on desktop, tablet, and mobile. So we can't see this at all on the page, but the code is still there and the images are still preloading. So it has the desired effect without causing anything to look weird on the page. Now let me talk about some of the more advanced settings that we have going on with all of these containers. I'm going to go to Navigator again. I'm going to click on this container here and go to my advanced tab so you can see that we have an ID here called main section. Now we need this for the jQuery that we have to add in in order to get this to work. Now if we click on these containers and go to the advanced tab, you can see that this one says slide one and if we keep going through, it'll say slide two, slide three, slide four, slide five. So I just named them uh, in order and we have to do this again for the jQuery to work. We also have to add a class to the individual toggle itself. And that is to get the hover to work instead of the click. So by default, if you put in a toggle on click, it expands like this, but I have it expanding on hover. So I had to add a class to all of the toggles themselves in order to get that to work. So we do have a lot going on. We have a container that has an ID called main section. We have each individual container in here that has its own class and then each toggle has a class as well. I have my HTML widget opened and this is where I added my jQuery. Now I'm not going to go into full detail about what was done here because a lot of this is from the Element How tutorial. They really helped me out with figuring out how to change the background images on Hover. So I'm just going to link to that so you can follow along. They do a much better job of explaining it than I could. But I do want to talk about this portion right here, which controls the toggle being opened on Hover. Now I mentioned before that I gave all of my toggles a class called slide. So by adding that class, in my jQuery, I can control the function of mouse over and mouse out. So what I have going on here is I have it sliding up on mouse over and then I have it sliding out on mouse out instead of it being done on click. So you can see if I go to my Elementor editor and just hover over these quickly that it works pretty well. So that's how that is being controlled. 
And now the rest of it down here is just from basically that tutorial that I followed on Element How. I uploaded my images to my media library and I added them to these different functions uh, in here. It worked really well and I'm just so thankful for that tutorial because I was really struggling to figure out how to do this effectively. So definitely check out that link and follow along if you want to learn how to do this. I have to do one more thing in order to get this to work correctly, and that's to add some custom CSS. As you can see, if you hover over these areas, the border at the top changes from white to blue, so I need to add that border in. So I'm going to go back to Elementor. I'm going to go to my container that is called main section, which you'll see right here, and go to custom CSS and add some code. What I've done is I've added a white border at the top, that's three pixels, and then on hover, I've changed that to be red. You can see that it does work in the editor. It's a little hard to see, but it is working. Now I just have to add some space in between these different containers. So I'm just gonna go to layout, and then I'm going to go to items, and change my elements gap to, let's say 20. I think that will work fine. And then if we update this, we should see that it's working correctly. So we have on hover, it is changing to red and the images are also changing. That's it for today's tutorial. I definitely learned a lot on this one and I hope that you did too. Thank you so much to our subscribers for suggesting different things that we can do in Elementor. Definitely keep those coming because I really like the challenge of trying to recreate something in Elementor. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.